everybody. Here we are in semi Orlando at the Rational Innovate Conference in 2011, of course. And this is Michael Cote of Red Monk, as always. And I've got two guests with myself. Would you guys like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Pete Marshall from Tivoli. I'm in the strategy group. I'm Peter Spunk from Rational, also with the strategy group. So what we have here, I think, is sort of like a, uh, a meat embodiment of a trend going on at the moment called DevOps. We've got on the, uh, on, on the left, we've got the dev. And on the, the right, we've got the ops. And so, you know, I, we've been talking, uh, you know, when I've been talking with you guys a little bit about thinking about DevOps and just, I've been talking with everyone about it. So it's fun to have you guys here to talk about it. And, and I'm curious, you know, rather than me ramble on about DevOps, what, what are you guys seeing as sort of the challenges that are impelling people to look into integrating development and operations together more? What, what's driving this interest in DevOps? I think the, the, the interest is getting driven from a number of areas. I mean, people are seeing what's going on in the web space. They're looking at you know, the Flickers of this world, the Googles of this world, and they're saying, yeah, can I do some of that? Can I do you know, continuous integration into production? Can I get my development and operations people working together? And um, you know, how do I go about doing that? And especially, how do I do that in an enterprise environment? where you know, there's a lot more going on, there's a lot more legacy code, there's a lot more moving parts, there's a lot more entrenched uh, organizational structure. So you know, there are some big challenges there, but I think the rewards uh, people are looking for are great. Yeah. I, I, the moving parts really resonated with me when Pete said that, because uh, when you think about it, it, not only the applications that get deployed and used um, you know, on the web, as he was talking about, or generally in an enterprise, have a lot of moving parts and a lot more. Uh, keep getting at it. In fact, there was a stat I saw the other day that uh, in 2010, um, half the server deployments were virtual, not physical. So we've crossed this threshold where more and more of the server deployments are, are virtualized instances, not physical boxes. So the number of moving parts keeps going up. Organizationals, you know, they're getting more and more complex. Lots of lots of uh, offshoring. Lots of globally distributed enterprises all over. And uh, so it's just getting more complicated. People need to be able to integrate these capabilities and functions and the people that get the work done in order to deliver the capabilities they need. I mean, that definitely is, sounds kind of like the enterprise take on DevOps where, where you have complexity because it's necessary, not because it's sort of like uh, an albatross hanging out on your shoulder. But you know, it's what you need to run your business, essentially. Yeah. And whether it's, right. it's geo-distributed or just a lot of complex moving parts and software. And, you, you know, I, I, I wonder, as, as sort of an example of the benefits that, that you get to, I mean, do you guys have some interesting examples of in that, in that whether you want to call it big or complex or enterprise, some examples of DevOps or DevOps-like things being successful? Like, like what, what's a way that you can tell people, here's why you would go through the trouble of learning about this DevOps thing and adapting? Well, I mean, we've got one customer in the financial services space that's bringing together its uh, asset management for both software and the, and the infrastructure. And what they're finding is more and more that they're, they're just making savings in time and deployed assets because they know where things are. They can go out confidently do a deployment, do things quicker, um, really get you know, time benefits, cost benefits. Um, that space. And, you know, are they doing that 100% across everything? Absolutely not. Doing that in a very small part of a very large um, enterprise, but they're getting good savings out of that already. But another client who's, um, they're responsible, basically they're a, a, a workforce uh, company. They you know, place employees into different jobs. And they had a, an application that was actually core to their business. Uh, a portal that's used for uh, the direct interaction of the employees with the managers and placing them. And uh, this employee portal, they were having all sorts of availability problems, a crash, uh, they were having problems diagnosing where the issue was, couldn't figure it out. Um, so they put some integrated solutions in place, some frameworks, um, some automation, a whole bunch of uh, tools offered by both Rational and Tivoli to solve this problem. And they increased their uptime dramatically. and. Um, they're looking to deploy this to more of their applications. They felt the framework they put in place in DevOps was not only one about tools and infrastructure, it was also about culture. They did a whole lot to break down the barriers between the development and operation organization and get people collaborating and working together towards shared goals, keeping this portal up, 
Right, really culture important. being probably long term one of the biggest benefits you get out of this. If you can break out of this mold of, you know, here's development and our job is done once the code is tested and then you know, here's a CD or a set of files, go forth and implement it. Um, it, it culture changes is, is, is interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that I see and, and kind of when I'm evaluating if something is DevOps or near DevOps, it seems like it does involve a fair amount of organizational or cultural change, or some amount, I don't know exactly how much. And, and uh, But then more importantly, the kind of technologies that facilitate that and make that change possible, because you know there's always a back and forth between the, the way an organization is structured and the technology that forces it, and it's kind of, it's, it's just a, a loop that goes around. And, and along those lines, I mean, you guys were getting into some of this, but I wonder if, if you could give some people guidance when they're thinking about doing DevOps or evaluating different options, like what are the kind of things they need to be looking at to trust that it is a DevOps thing? Like how, how can they right. how can they establish right. trust with the offerings? <laughs> that's, a, yeah, that's, a really, that's a really good question. I think what you really need to look at is, is this, you know, is this change in terms of, of process, in terms of, of people, uh, of culture as you were talking about. I think that's a, that's a very important Thing. Um, I've seen projects where, you know, we're going to do retooling, but we're really going to keep these things. Um, we're going to keep these things separate. So look for shared outcomes, right? You know, I mean, what are you actually trying to do here? If you're just trying to improve technology, or you're just trying to improve results in operations, results in development, that's great. Maybe you're doing virtualization or automation, cloud. Uh, maybe you're doing agile on the development side, but you really, you know, you, you're not doing DevOps. DevOps is going to smell like DevOps. You, know, you might not be able to quite put your finger on what it is, but you're going to see those changes happening on both sides. If if it's not, you're not doing DevOps. In my opinion. You know? yeah. yeah, I would agree. It's um, to give it the sniff test, and then make sure that it's it's um, capabilities that span. Um, both development and operations. So it's during planning um, and, and planning applications and scoping them out and architecting them, can you architect the infrastructure as part of it, right? Can you think about what's going to be happening in deployment? Can you design for that? Can you design for runability, sustainability, in the manufacturing term that say design for manufacturing? You know, that sort of concept, does it transcend what's going on inside development? Um, you mentioned looping back, which I think is a really important notion. Once things are deployed, can you build feedback loops that feed back information from operations back into development? Trouble tickets flowing back into defects, um, performance data flowing back into test automation and test suites, that kind of stuff. Can you establish those linkages? Can the vendor show it? You know, call, call us in. Call any of our competitors in. Let us, let us demo it for you. Let us set, us up, set it up and do a proof of technology. Yeah, no, that, that feedback loop is one of the things I like the most just because I feel like it gives developers insight into people using their applications they didn't have before, or at least a lot more easily and quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, this data was always out there, but I think there's a lot of uh, effort in DevOps to sort of lower those walls down, <laughs> to be metaphoric about it. Yeah. So, so, so finally, you know, we've, kind of, we've also kind of hit on some of the things you guys are thinking, and I'm, I'm guessing they're kind of embodied or, or embedded, if you will, in IBM offering. So I'm curious, like what what it is IBM has to offer at the moment in in the DevOps area. I mean, what if if one of those people wanted to come to you guys and ask you to uh, you know show us what you got? Like what what would be the kind of things that you would put in front of them? Well, we've got a, a whole set of integrations between the Rational and the Tivoli tooling that cover everything from deployment, integration of defect and and problem management integration of, of the data layer of, of assets and CMDBs, change management, as Peter's saying, some more um, applications that get into things like enterprise deployment planning, governance, that kind of thing. What we find is that we take these to our customers and everyone wants to do something slightly different. I don't think there are any cookie cutter DevOps projects, at least in the market today. And um, we'll engage. So, you know, if folks are watching this video and they're here at Innovate, come and talk to us. And uh, if not, give us a call, get in touch. Um, we've just put a new collaborative design developed. I always get that wrong, sorry. 
collaborative development and operations website up on IBM.com uh, under both the Rational and Tivoli URLs, and ch come and check us out. Yeah, yeah. And back, you're asking this fundamental question. I think about is you know what claims can clients believe, and how should they test the vendor making the claims? Um, I'd say do it, test them. I'd also say look at particular attributes. You know, like how consumable is the solution? Are there multiple, uh, what we call entry points, what customers would call, you know, bite size accelerated pieces that they can take on and accelerate a solution for them and get that done? Is it based on open standards, right? Is the way the integrations are done open and accessible that other vendors can play? Uh, we have an architectural movement and um, I would call it a, a de facto standard called OSLC that we're working on. That's uh, an open interface. Uh, it's got about 365 registered uh, people in 34 companies uh, interacting with it. Basically building out specs for integrating requirements management, change management, quality management, all those sorts of things. Um, so I asked the vendor, you know, is this open? Is the way you're integrating, um, you know, something I can extend? Is it something that other vendors in a large ecosystem can play in? Those are important attributes of a solution that clients should ask vendors about. And uh, we'll stand by what we're doing, I think, don't you? Uh, we will. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, great. Well, I, I think, you know, for, uh, you know, I, it's, it's been nice to see you guys uh, as, as a large, supposedly ponderous company, you know, kind of pretty quickly move on to doing something in DevOps. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been nice to see that you guys have actually, uh, you have something to, to sort of offer people at the moment. And I, I really appreciate you spending the time to kind of just go over the, uh, kind of what you guys see as DevOps is useful and how it's being used, and then more importantly, what you guys have at the moment to help people out. These are, it's an exciting thing. It's an exciting time. It really is. Yeah. We're in it for the long haul. We've been doing it for, what, five, five years, years now? Yeah. Five years now, and we'll be doing it for ten more, I'm sure. It's a big problem. It's complex, and uh, we're happy to be part of it, contributing, making stuff happen in the industry, and thanks for the opportunity to talk. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'll have to check in next year, yeah. see how we'll it's turned that. out. Super. Thanks. Well, we'll see everyone next time. Thanks, Michael.